After 400 years of slavery, God parted the Red Sea and led Moses and the Israelites to freedom from Pharaoh and the Egyptian army. Shortly thereafter, in the wilderness of Shur, the Israelites became thirsty. In Exodus 15, 20-27, it states, So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Marah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he had made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. And they came to Elam, where were twelve walls of water, and three score and ten palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. So what's your Mara? What's sour and indigestible in your life that you aren't trusting God with? Let's look at how one of the great men of the Bible, Moses, handled this situation. First, Moses believed enough to ask God. In verse 24, And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them. See, Moses believed. He believed that he served a God of miracles, and that miracle was enacted right before his eyes. God used what was in their own environment to fix the problem. Moses and the Israelites were distressed. They surely looked at all available opportunities to find palatable water and came up empty-handed. The Israelites probably thought they'd have to keep walking to find a fresh water spring or a well like they were accustomed to in Egypt. But God used what they had there in front of them to provide for their needs. How often do we try to tackle problems with our own hands? And tell me that when trying to face these problems on our own, we don't think some outside solution would solve it all. One that's not readily available to us right away. Something like living in a different climate, or having more money, or having a different mode of transportation. Whatever it is, we often look outward instead of around us, inward, and most importantly, upward. In Mara, God is showing us that he is in control and can use what we have in front of us to cure our own ills. The question is, are we calling out to him in prayer, reading his word, and being faithfully obedient to his call so that we can receive such a blessing? Moses didn't cry out to God in prayer out of custom or for show in front of others. He did it because he knew he serves a God of miracles, a God that turned into uh, his own staff into a serpent a clean hand into a diseased hand and back to a clean one, and parted an entire sea with not a drop of water on the ground to let the Israelites go. Our God is one of miracles, and Moses knew it. He cried out to God to fix the problem because he firmly believed God could and God would. Are we crying out to God with our problems? Or are we trying to fix them on our own? Do we really believe God is able and interested in helping us? Faith starts with belief, deepens with obedience, and matures with patience and observation. Here's how God works in three steps. We as believers believe enough to ask. Whatever our problems are, we believe enough to ask God legitimately, authentically, uh, seriously for help. Secondly, we as believers are obedient to his word in reading the Bible and in our actions in living out his commandments. So that when we come to him, we are coming from a relationship standpoint, not one of an unbeliever. As a side note here, if you don't already have a relationship with God, this is a great reason why it's so important to have one. Finally, we as believers wait for God. You can see more about that in Psalms 46.10. To respond, acting out our faith. When we wait for God, we are showing God that we trust him, we believe him, and we're going to wait for his response. So often this isn't the case in the society we live in where everything is instant gratification or nothing.
So what's your Mara? Are you putting the three steps I just mentioned, believing enough to ask, being obedient in his word and in our actions, and patient enough to see God move? Are you putting them into action? If not, I urge you to do so today. God is worthy. My prayer for you today and for me and for all of us is that we have a mindfulness of God's divine power and love in the storms of adversity we all face. Let's pray. God, I thank you for this time and this opportunity to share the good news with others. There's so many incredible stories in your word, and I just thank you for allowing me to see it and allowing others to hear it, Lord. And, and I pray that when we bec- when we come upon these things, when we come upon the sour water that we can't digest, that we look to you first and that we study your word and we're obedient to you and that we wait for you to respond, Lord, and I know that you will. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen.